The spawn of hell is terrorizing the galaxy, demons from your worst nightmares are ripping people apart everywhere you turn, and only one person can save us. That's right, we're sending in the world's best bounty hunter, Samus Aran. Yup, Doomslayer is on vacation with Isabel, so Samus is going to take up the fight against the hell spawn. Samus has been through enough hell herself, she became an orphan when a space pirate alien dragon thingy named Ridley murdered her parents and was taken into the care of the alien race called the Chozo, who infused her with Chozo DNA and trained her to become an elite warrior. Samus would then go on to having many adventures throughout the galaxy, destroying many enemies and monsters herself, as well as also double dipping into another source of DNA sampling, this time from the Metroids themselves. Now Samus is a human Chozo Metroid hybrid ass kicking machine. Will her abilities, excellent combat feats, and her mountain of weaponry be enough to kill her new enemies from hell? Let's find out. First off, let's take a look at Samus's gear, starting from her iconic suits. She has her power suit, which is a basic suit with normal armaments, the Varia suit, which reduces damage and protects from extreme heat and lava, the gravity suit, which also protects her from extreme heat and lava, and also extreme cold and increases dash melee attacks, and can help Samus move freely in liquids, her light and dark suits, which protect her from dark ether, the Phazon suit, the PED suit, hazard shield, the fusion suit, which allows her to survive in situations with no breathable air and enhances mobility and gives a protecting shield. The Zero Suit, which comes with a paralyzer gun, rocket boots, and is easy to maneuver in. And the Metroid Suit. This is when the Metroid DNA goes full force and can absorb living tissue and energy and tech upon contact, and also grants access to the Hyper Beam. The best thing about Samus's suits is she doesn't need to change her armor every time for every situation, since it wouldn't be practical in a hazardous environment with enemies attacking you. Her suits kind of meld together, with each suit's powers overlapping and having them all be active at the same time. Now for the weaponry. We have things like the power beam, charge beam, ice beam, missiles of every form, plasma beam, wave beam, light beam, the battle hammer, judicator, hyper beam, omega cannon, shock coil, dark beam. Then you have other attacks like the flamethrower, dark burst, sun burst, sonic boom, wave buster, and ice spreader. I swear the arm can Cannon is a Swiss army knife on steroids. And finally, there are many platforming areas in Doom Eternal, but come on, Samus is a Nintendo character, and that company's whole thing is platforming. So Samus has all the necessary tools for getting around environments, such as the Spider Magnet, which helps Samus cling to walls, the Spider Ball in the Morph Ball form, which allows her to cling to walls and ceilings and move around while in the Morph Ball form, the Speed Booster, which allows Samus to run at supersonic speeds, the Grapple Beam that can be fired at terrain and pull it out of the way, spin boost, and the space jump, as well as the flash shift for quick dashes through the air. Now with that laundry list of deadly weapons and sleek suits out of the way, let's get started. Samus will hear a distress beacon and voices coming from Earth, with the death toll being in the billions and people crying out for help. Samus has no idea what kind of enemy is doing this and will go to investigate. Being prepared for anything this time, Samus remembers not to forget any of her abilities and weapons upon landing. This time she is starting with all her power-ups like she's at the end game. Stepping off of her ship, she sees the planet torn apart with pools of lava everywhere. Normally the heat would be too much, but because of the gravity suit protecting her from extreme heat, she is unfazed as the suit also grants her the ability to swim through lava, which can get to temperatures of 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. So she is fully equipped to handle the extreme weather and atmosphere. Samus scans for any form of human life. She doesn't pick up any in the area with her scanners. As Samus moves forward in her search, she encounters her first batch of enemies. Most of the enemies Samus will first encounter will be the zombies, mecha zombies, soldiers with the blasters and shields, gargoyles, and imps. These are essentially the fodder enemies that the Doom Slayer can pick off with his chainsaw to gain ammo for himself, or shoot and kill with pretty much anything, or blood punch them to death as well. Now before we go any further, because the blood punch is an excellent move in Doom Eternal, let's see if Samus has enough physical force to punch through something to instantly 
instantly kill it. What do we know about the blood punch? Well, it's a very strong punch. And yep, that's about it. The punch does send out a small shockwave, which can damage or kill fodder enemies as well. Taking the description literally from Doom, it's described as a highly powered up melee punch. So yeah, a very strong hit. Could a punch or melee hit from Samus cause the same damage as the Doom Slayer's melee punch? And on that note, while we're on the topic, we also see Doom Slayer literally rip apart enemies when they are vulnerable and weakened with his bare hands. Could Samus pull this off as well? Firstly, let's explain something. Many of the demons are human husks that have the Argent energy stolen from them to power up the enemy's power sources. What's left behind is the demons you face from the human remains and tissue. Knowing this, the Doom Slayer is basically punching through human tissue and bones. So how much power would Samus need to do this as well? Scientifically, you need around 45,000 PSI or 800,000 newtons to be exerted around the speed of a bullet, which is going at 760 miles a second in 75 milliseconds. You would need at least that much power and speed to punch through people. Now, how strong is Samus? Let's take a look at this clip from everyone's favorite game in the franchise, obviously being Other M. Vorash is described as a lava whale, and Samus can pull and fling him out of the lava with her grapple beam. Lava whales aren't real, so let's look at a comparison of the blue whale. They can weigh anywhere between 72 and 135 tons. Even if we went with the smallest being 72 tons, that is 144,000 pounds Samus is lifting and throwing around the room. We know she is way stronger than a normal human thanks to the infusion of the Chozo DNA and has knocked away and grappled enemies much larger than her. The only real reason she doesn't tear enemies apart in her own games is I don't think Nintendo wants any of their first party characters disemboweling enemies and being covered in blood. Samus could also just run through these enemies with her speed booster. The speed booster states Samus would be running at supersonic speed. To reach supersonic speed, you have to be going 768 miles per hour. Is that enough to just run through pretty much most of the fodder enemies if Samus doesn't want to be bothered? Yes, it would be. For an example, let's visit the boys. In that show, we see a character by the name of A-Train run through a character named Robin. A-Train's top speed in Season 1 is clocked at 371 miles per second, which is 830 miles per hour. I doubt he was going that fast when he ran through Robin, but for the sake of the argument, let's just say he was. When he ran through her, it completely shattered her instantly. Samus is going nearly as fast with the speed booster, so Samus could absolutely ignore most of the enemies and just ram into them. If Samus wanted to as well, pretty much any and all weaponry Samus has could instantly kill these things as well, as any weapon or bomb will do, as she has killed far more formidable opponents with her gear than the bog standard enemies in Doom, so they are a joke to Samus. The Dark Burst is also a solid option when dealing with hordes as it can open up a dark portal and suck in and kill enemies all around the area, kind of like a small black hole. After dealing with those jokes of enemies, Samus will run into the Arachnatron. I like to think of this enemy as the spider head from Toy Story if it had a gun strapped to it. To fight this enemy, you could either disarm it by destroying the mounted gun, or just caveman it and shoot the brain section to kill it, or put it in a weakened state to walk up and give it an eye exam. Pretty much any form of firearm can destroy the mounted gun and harm the arachnatron so any of Samus's weapons can do the job just fine. Samus just has to make sure to be constantly moving and not standing still while firing at it. To make the job easier for her as well, she could also use her homing missiles to lock onto the mounted gun and the brain itself. An easy two for one that can take these things down. Eventually, after a whole lot of killing and literally running through enemies, Samus would encounter Deeg Nylox, one of the three hell priests overseeing the invasion of Earth. Knowing and seeing firsthand what this monster has done to the Earth, Samus would not hold back and would kill him. These guys are super weak, so Samus could get creative with a kill here. Maybe pull a Godzilla and shove her arm cannon down his throat and then use it blowing him to kingdom come. After this, Samus would return to her ship, but get an energy reading from a place known as Exaltia. After heading there, she would encounter a glowing green wolf that would lead her to the celestial locator that would tell her where the remaining hell priests are. This place has a lot of platforming and climbing as well, but for Samus, that's pretty easy since she has access to her space jump, Morph Ball, which can cling to any surface and travel, and the Grapple Beam and Spider Magnet. All manner of platforming is a breeze for her, and every level of Doom doesn't offer any challenge in that area that Samus cannot traverse. The new enemies Samus will encounter will be the Kako Demon, Hell Knight, and Revenant. Kako Demons are pretty easy to kill, Samus can just launch
launch an explosive into its mouth, which will put it into a paralyzed state, or Samus could hit it with a powerful plasma attack to kill it, or something Nintendo would never allow, but she could get away with here, just be more gruesome and punch through its eye and rip it in half. Or Samus could use the flash shift she could have charged and dashed through the air and kill it. The Hell Knight is another enemy that's not very threatening. It is tanky and can take a lot of punishment, but can still be taken down by anything in Samus's arsenal. As long as Samus can keep her distance and apply pressure, she's gonna be fine. She could use her ice beam to slow it down or keep it frozen long enough as well to hit it with a barrage of anything in her arsenal of weapons to finish it off. As for the Revenant, Samus could still see it even though it is cloaked with her x-ray visor. It will spot invisible enemies even those that don't appear to be on thermal visors and Samus can see through flesh as well. Samus can then destroy the cannons on its back pretty easily even if it moves around with homing attacks, pretty simple enemy to destroy. After that, Samus will run into the Betrayer and get the device for locating the other Hell Priests. Next, Samus will find one of the Hell Priests in the northern arctic of the cultist base. Although it is an extremely cold environment, Samus's suit can withstand both extreme heat and extreme cold, so she won't be slowed down or immobilized by the weather being freezing. Again, the normal enemy types are nothing for Samus to be concerned about, but Samus will then run into the Doom Hunter. This thing is essentially a demon on a sled, a very intricate mechanical floating sled, and it also has a force field around it. However, the force field can be destroyed after destroying the opposed mechanic bottom. Good thinking with that one, put on a force field that doesn't cover everything. Samus has many ways of killing a Doom Hunter. The way the Doom Slayer destroys this enemy, Samus could also employ by shooting at the base of it, getting the shield off, and firing at the demon itself afterwards and killing it. Seeing as how this is pretty much a boss enemy though, I have been deliberately saving these next abilities I'm about to talk about because, let's be real, endgame Metroid Dread with the Metroid suit steamrolls enemies, and well now, it's about to get even steamier. So if you're not aware, by the end of Metroid Dread, when Samus has the Metroid suit, Suit, Samus literally has the ability of absorbing her enemy's energy and making it her own simply by touching them. Think of it like Cell from Dragon Ball Z, but instead of absorbing you through his tail, Samus just needs to make contact with you. She also has access to the Hyper Beam. Samus could literally dash towards the Doom Hunter, grab the bottom of it, and it's over, or Hyper Beam the thing off the face of the earth. The Chozo tech combined with Samus's ramped up DNA at this point is pretty much unstoppable. There are a million different ways for Samus to kill the remaining enemies with the weaponry and abilities we've gone over, and all of them are viable options for destruction. With the Doom Hunter now dead, Samus can now kill the next Hell Priest, which will then cause the Con Maker, you could think of this character as like a rogue robo-angel, I'm oversimplifying, but I digress. The Con Maker will tell Samus they have hidden the last Hell Priest and that to give up on saving the Earth, and it's the Earth's time for penance. Samus ignores this and sets out for a way to find the last Hell Priest. To do this, Samus will have to go to the Arc building just like the Doom Slayer and talked with the idiot who started all this crap, Samuel Hayden. You see, Hayden was basically using the Argent power source as a new renewable form of power for the Earth, which they found out was coming from hell. And well, you can put two and two together. Basically, demons took over, humanity was royally f and humans have tried to put up a final resistance against hell. On the way to the Ark building, Samus would encounter more enemies yet again. I mean, this is doom. If you're not constantly killing something gruesomely, you're not playing the game right. New enemies such as the Pain Elementals could be destroyed in any way, with the easiest way being with ice attacks or plasma attacks, both of which Samus is capable of. Pinky, Prowler, Cyber Mancubus, Archvile. None of these enemies can stop Samus's killing spree. Close range, long range, a simple touch, all these demons are going down. As Samus continues her quest of liberating Earth, she will run into Hayden, or what's left of him, at the Ark facility. However, before she can leave with him, Samus will have to fight the Marauder. And again, nothing too hard for Samus here. She has supersonic speed and a hyper beam, plus her arsenal. Regardless of this demon trying to outflash step Samus and his annoying shield, Samus can just time her attacks because every time the Marauder attacks, he leaves himself open, which gives Samus the chance to go all out on him. Him. With the Marauder dead, Samus can now hunt the last Hell Priest. However, on the topic of the Hell Priest, Doom never actually delves into this aspect, so it's up to the players to deduce themselves. But the first priest talks about how even if his body is killed, his soul is protected. Then Doom Slayer crushes a medallion, the Hell Priest seems scared, and Doom Slayer proceeds to kill the priest. These medallions can be found by defeating the priest champions, so Samus could destroy their bodies and make sure their souls are gone by getting these medallions as well. 
well. With the location of the last Hell Priest, Samus can now make her way there, but oops, she has to go to the center of Mars, because Samus has never been to the center of a planet ever before. To get there, Samus will go to Phobos and use the BFG 10K to blow a hole into the center of the planet, again, while also killing a ton of demons. After completing the mission, Samus is not going to launch herself like Doom Slayer cosplaying ammunition. She has her own personal ship, so she'll call it and take the ship to Sentinel Prime. Arriving there, Samus won't be greeted as kindly as Doom Slayer was, so she'll have to end up fighting, but they would still invite Samus to compete in their weird knockoff Roman Colosseum and fight their gladiator. This fight is a little trickier as the enemy can reflect back anything shot at him when he spins his weapon. Samus will have to look for an opening or use the flash shift to highly damage the gladiator and create an opening where it can't defend itself, and fire at it with the wide beam for a massive AoE which would probably be the best option here, or the annihilator. But if we want to go basic again, Samus could just hyperbeam and kill it. Now we arrive at the battle with the con maker. This enemy has large AoE attacks that leave damaging effects on the surface that when stepped on do continuous damage. Samus will have to dash through the air continuously doing damage to the con maker, then finishing the enemy with physical hits. Thanks to the grapple beam, Samus could pull down the enemy instead of flying up to it like Doom Slayer did and hit the enemy. Or like I mentioned earlier, Samus could incorporate the energy from the con maker by making contact and absorbing it. Let's address this because I'm sure people will ask could Samus even do this? Samus has been shown to absorb any form of tech or biomaterial with her suit. The Chozo were a very advanced race with amazing tech, and it has been shown that Samus's suit could be used in tandem with any other technology or organic matter in her games. That was the amazing thing about the Chozo and their technology. It could be infused with other machines and energy that they themselves didn't even create, and it could work seamlessly together, not to mention the fact that Samus has the Chozo and Metroid DNA in her, making it capable for her to harness many different forms of energy without any repercussions. And while the Argent and Sentinel energy in Doom may seem more mystical than scientific, that's not the case. Those energy sources can be used with everyday weaponry and technology. That was the whole plan with Samuel Hayden, to incorporate the Hell energy into Earth's tech to make it more sustainable. It wasn't some random magical energy source as long as the machines that it was used with could incorporate the energy and could be used in weapons, transportation, and even opening doors. I don't see any reason as to why Samus could not absorb the energy herself and incorporate that energy into her own attacks and life systems, especially when her tech is more advanced than anything Earth has ever created that could harness Argent or Sentinel energy. You could also think of it kind of like the Philosopher's Stone in Full Metal Alchemist. While human souls were the source for that power, it could still be used for scientific purposes. Now with the Con maker out of the way, it's time for the Icon of Sin. Getting to him is going to be a pain in the ass, as the area has a ton of enemies much more than usual. Which is why Samus can now employ what she was saving with power bombs. Basically, these bombs can be used to wipe out large areas of enemies instantly, leaving nothing behind. Taken from the Metroid series, it states, The power bomb's explosion is strong enough to destroy the hardest elements, including Bendesium. Now, Bendesium doesn't exist in the real world, so I'm unsure how strong that actually is. However, taking what's given to us by stating it can destroy the hardest elements, and that Metroid is set in a futuristic fictional universe that does have known elements from the real world like steel, I think it's fair to say real elements all exist in Metroid. And if the power bomb can actually destroy the hardest known elements, the hardest real known element is named nuclear pasta. It's a substance in the crust of neutron stars and it is a super dense material and is 10 billion times harder than steel. Seeing as the power bomb claims to be able to destroy the hardest elements, if it can destroy this element, then Samus can destroy every enemy that tries to swarm her in this section instantly, and make it to the Icon of Sin no problem. We currently have no plans to authorize the use of power bombs. As you know, they have the ability to spread a high temperature heat wave over a large area, impacting living things. Which is a nice way of saying they can vaporize humans instantly. You should be well aware of how dangerous power bombs are, and how their devastation can't be obstructed with common materials. 
And on a side note, if you may ask how come Samus doesn't die from the power bomb when she uses it, she can actually absorb the energy from a power bomb to refill her own energy, leaving her unharmed. Now the battle with the Icon of Sin. This enemy is huge, heavily armored, and literally shakes the level every time he attacks. He has lasers, earthquake punches, and a bunch of annoying fodder to bother you while you're trying to aim at him. And none of that means anything to Samus. There's nothing to hold back here, as this is it, the final confrontation for all the marbles. With a mix of power bombs destroying the enemies, running at Samus, it will also damage the armor on the Icon of Sin. Samus could also pull down his head, stun him, and stop him from moving. Due to her impressive strength and being much stronger than a normal human, she could do this to the Icon of Sin. After a few more power bombs and hyper beams, Samus would weaken him and cause him to expose his brain for Samus to deliver the final blow. Now this is where Samus could kill this demon in a number of ways for him to be permanently dead. Reading and researching, it states Titans could be put down with either Argent energy like the Crucible or Atlan weapons which use Sentinel energy, which is the untainted Argent energy since the Atlans did not use the Argent energy. Samus could absorb the untainted Sentinel energy that is stored in capsules through the levels, and Samus could incorporate it into her beams and kill the Icon of Sin's brain. Also, it is stated that Argent Plasma from Hell underwent neutron activation that was mass-produced by the UAC. And neutron activation is a real-world science, which consists of when the sample is exposed to neutrons in a nuclear reactor, causing a portion of the atoms to undergo neutron capture. This produces high-energy compound nuclei, which rapidly transform to radioactive forms of the original chemical element. Samus happens to have a mini nuclear reactor in the Battle Hammer, which could be used with the Argent energy she could have gotten throughout the story and create her own weapon for killing the Icon of Sin. Now with the Icon of Sin dead, the Priest dead, the Demons dead, and the Con Maker dead, Samus has saved the Earth from total extinction. Samus's enhanced biology, Chozo technology, in tandem with her weapons and abilities, makes her more than a match for anything Doom Eternal has to throw at her. Many seem to regard Samus as not a lethal a weapon, but she is. The only reason we don't see her rip things apart like Doom Slayer is Nintendo would have a heart attack, but make no mistake, she is not to be f***ed with. Samus saves the day again and goes off into space looking for her next big adventure that will hopefully come soon. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, glory punch that subscribe button for more videos like this and like and comment as well. Let me know your opinion on the matter. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Nath out.